And this little piece I'm going to read for you is called A Chiseler's Christmas. We may not have been able to count the weeks or months to Easter or Whit, or even to St. Patrick's Day, but we always knew when it was only 12 weeks to Christmas. Clark Suite and Toy Shop at the top of Balsam Road had both windows full of a vast selection of toys. Each item had its own label, telling its own story. A red fire engine with a yellow ladder, three shillings, or 12 weeks at threepence per week, and it's yours on Christmas Eve. <laughs> a swarm of children with our noses stuck to the glass window and our warm breath in the cold October air fogging up the window panes. Then polishing the window with the sleeves of our coats and listening to the chorus of voices all shouting, I'm getting that and that, and maybe I'll get that, but I'm definitely getting that. <laughs> <laughs> Only for Clark's 12 weeks to Christmas plan, many as a child in Inchicore and Kilmainham would never have seen a toy on Christmas morning. We seldom missed a Sunday's visit as the shop was only a few paces from St. Michael's Church. And even on a weekday, a special visit would be made just to see again the toys we dreamed would be in our stockings at the foot of the bed on Christmas morning. On Christmas Eve, the girl next door would come in to help me write my letter to Santa Claus. She would dictate the letter and address the envelope. But when she insisted that I put down a blue sports racing car <laughs> with the number of my whole door perched on it, I threw down the pencil. <laughs> I want a red fire engine with a yellow ladder. <laughs> I don't want a blue racing car, even if it has our horn door written on it. <laughs> God bless Bernie. She was so <coughs> clear on today in Belfast. But she had great patience in those days. The battle between the blue racing car and the red fire engine was not won that Christmas Eve. As I ran upstairs saying I was going to wait up all night and if Mr. Santa Claus tried to offload his old blue <laughs> racing car into my stocking, I'd give him a good kick. <laughs> I remember fighting the Sandman that night. The Sandman was the invisible man who went around at night time throwing sand into your eyes to make you sleep or blind you. But the Sandman had won the battle. And when I woke the next morning, there was the bloody blue face <laughs> sticking out of my stocking at the end of the bed. I cursed Santa. And then I noticed the little mouth organ and the sweets in the other stocking. I was told later that this was Santa's way of saying sorry and that he must have had only one red fire engine, and that he'd given it to a poor little boy who had no mammy and daddy. <laughs> After all, you have a mammy, even if you have no daddy. That's true, I said, and began to think of what my pal had said to me a few days before Christmas. You're lucky. You may have no daddy, but you have three mammies. He was referring to my ma and her two sisters, my aunts who lived with us. And besides, he added, <coughs> Mammies are always better than daddies. Sure, I never see mine only when he comes home drunk and tries to beat us all up. <laughs> <laughs> the man and the ants never get drunk, I said. But I still get fed up now. <laughs> and I'm bold. <laughs> After mass that Christmas morning, I rushed over to Clark's toy shop. Both windows were empty. The red fire engine with the yellow ladder was gone. <laughs> Old Mrs. Clark, Lord Restra, told me that Santa had collected all the toys last night and she didn't know where the poor little boy lived who had got the fire engine. I think that was the only Christmas that I was disappointed. The following year, I got the red fire engine with the yellow ladder and I wondered if the poor little boy got the blue racing car. <laughs> I didn't seem to mind what other children got and I never cursed Santa for giving bigger presents to other children. The way I looked at it was, if you got what you asked for, you were happy. Yeah. Yeah.